Hi there, it's Vince. After my F-150 installation video, I had more than a couple of people asking me about the choices I made for power distribution because I was trying to correct the faults of many mobile installations that I'd done before this. And so in this video, I'm going to step you through the drawings and the schematics and the reasons why I made the decisions I did so that you can improve your own mobile setup and grab some ideas and take away for your vehicle. Stay tuned. All right, so let's get into it and let's start with the whiteboard, shall we? So what you're looking at here is your typical mobile installation. You put a radio in, you put some fuses, you put a fuse in, a couple of fuses, one at each end, you know, one at the battery end, and one at the radio, and you run the wire and, you know, put up your antennas and all the rest is good. So, so far, some good. But the problem with this install is leaving the radio on, it drains your vehicle battery. Well, you don't want, and you can't start it. And that's especially an issue if you're at a public service event and you're you know, doing a, a check post for the day, let's say. So let's take a look at how we can fix that. So we, the one thing that some people think about doing, and, and I always think about doing, is I put in an auxiliary battery. And I have to make sure that the battery I add is the same chemistry as my vehicle battery. Lead acid is in 90% of the vehicles out there today. And so in doing so, I can tap into the existing charging circuit and just charge two batteries instead of one. That's no big deal, right? But it's not very safe until I add a fuse. So now I've added a fuse in the circuit leading to the charging of the battery. Now you're going to note it originally was a 25 amp your fuse because I was powering the radios directly. 100 watt radio, uh, 100 watt HF radio needs 22 amps, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. So now it's 10 amps because all I have to do is provide just a little bit of charging current. So that makes it easier because the wire that runs out of the engine compartment down to the auxiliary battery doesn't have to be nearly as heavy so that's less expensive makes it easier to run because it's not as heavy although you can still run the bigger gauge wire and you'll just have less voltage drop that's never a bad thing but the problem here is that this auxiliary battery can backfeed into your vehicle and there's still nothing preventing it from draining your vehicle's battery when the engine is shut off. So let's see how we can fix those things. Uh, we, we try to accomplish those through isolation. So all I've done here is I've added a diode in circuit to prevent that backflow. Yes, there are more elegant ways to do this. West Mountain Radio sells a battery isolator for vehicles, as does uh, Blue Sea Marine and, and many others. But the diode is the simple choice for me because I am going to, in a minute, add some switching in. Now, the West Mountain Radio Rig does all that switching for you, but I can do it with a relay and a diode. So now this solves the problem of the auxiliary battery um, not trying to backfeed into your vehicle battery, but it doesn't solve the problem of if the auxiliary battery gets drained because you leave your radios on, you're still draining your main vehicle battery. All right, so let's add that switching. So the switching circuit is simple. All I'm doing is I've added a relay that is triggered by the vehicle's accessory circuit. So if I turn on the accessory, the you know, the charging comes on and it starts flowing down to the auxiliary battery. I feed that off of an accessory fuse. You should be able to find one of these in your vehicle. Uh, please don't ask me for help. I'm not an automotive expert and, and I don't know all the vehicles off the top of my head, but you can look for an accessory uh, circuit and you can find a, uh, a fuse that you can tap into and simply grab a little bit of current to power the relay and then you notice it's a, uh, a normally open relay so that it only flows the current when the relay is closed. Now it's charging the auxiliary battery and we've fixed the backfeed issue on the prior slide. But 
So far, so good, right? But now the question is, how do I know my auxiliary battery is getting any charge? Well, I could go fancy and add like a voltmeter on it and stuff, but I don't want to be distracted with that. So I'm just going to add a simple LED. Uh, an LED with a current limiting resistor really is all that's needed. Just put it on the side of the relay that only energizes when the key is on, and it'll tell you if you're getting current. Now, if the fuse is blown, the 10 amp fuse in the upper left corner, if it's blown, that LED is not going to be on. The relay is still going to work because the accessory line goes, or maybe the indicator won't come on if the accessory fuse has blown. So now you've got two places to look, but that's not that big a deal when you stop to think of it. But now, what about all the other accessories you might want to run in a vehicle? Well, let's take a look at my list. Now we can add on to that and not drain the main vehicle battery. So in my vehicle, I wanted three accessories. Uh, I wanted a dash cam, I wanted a cellular signal booster, and a low-power APRS transmitter so that it was all these things only need to be on when I am operating the vehicle. They don't need to be on when I'm parked, else they become a drain on the battery, and that's something we're trying to not do, right? But somehow they need to be connected into the circuit. Now, you'll note that each one of these uh, in, my, in the box, it says they need to be individually fused. Please fuse everything that you're putting in as soon as you're connecting it to a battery for safety's sake. So let's see how we're going to connect them in. So I just add a simple uh, power pole distribution. Power pole everything, right? Uh, this is where you add the power pole distribution box to, uh, to power your other stuff. And it makes it nice and simple. So now what I've got going on is I have a vehicle battery and a simple 10 amp fuse that is ready to deliver current when this relay is closed it turns the led on it runs the current down to the battery which powers my radios and it also runs the current down to my power pole distribution which powers all of my accessories is that simple and elegant or what do you think you can use this in your uh, vehicle's configuration? Drop me a note in the comments and uh, let me know. I'd be glad to uh, hear about it. Thanks for watching. 73.